you know, you're never going to know what happened unless you were there. Right. Basically, you're never going to know what happened unless you were there. A hundred thousand people can come along and say one thing, <laughs> but you're never really going to know what happened. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? I, I'll never serve on a jury for that reason. Unfortunately, this is not a story which is like something out of the blue that who would think. And here's the interesting thing about what you were saying with three shots and Tasha said he has three characters, but it's a two-character play. Mm -hmm. So now you've got this third character who's actually not ever present on stage, but he is. When a white cop kills a black kid, the polarization politically, it was, it was racial profiling, it was done on purpose. These cops are, you know, are like trigger happy. You know, this is, this is an aberration to, you know, I, you know, I thought he was going for a gun. It's a two-way street. What if, what if, what if that person is racist against me? Uh, and what if I'm, but what if I'm racist against that person? So this work, um, although on the very surface it seems, it, it seems like you know that the events are quite clear. I think they're not. I think it. I think there's a lot going on here, and that that's interesting to me. That's very interesting to me. And again, the stakes here could not be higher. Trained to instinctively make the right decision, but in the split second of the moment, you never can. You can't ever guarantee that it's going to be the right decision. And when it's a split second of three shots, it's irrevocable. Here's a guy, 40 odd years old, white boy from New Jersey, being compelled to write a story about a black kid getting shot by a white cop. No, Todd doesn't want to share. He doesn't even want to be in front of the camera in the first place. We put him on the spot. We put the playwright on the spot. He'd prefer not to be on camera. So he's just been like a kid in a candy store watching the process, the process of auditions. When we auditioned for the piece, it was the first time he had ever heard his words come off the page and have an actor you know, not, not really even act them out. I mean, it was a, an audition, but have the, because it was sides at the audition, but act them out. It was amazing for him to see that he could get this story that comes out of his heart and put it on paper and these people bring it to life. Right. Is that why, is that why this character was a basketball player? Definitely. Definitely. Everybody likes to play basketball, you know? I know. I, I, I hear you. Yeah. Normally, after the first, uh, first rehearsal, the table read, we kick the play right out and have them come back later. In this particular case, though, what happened was that we had Todd with us. Donato. <laughs> <laughs> oh, father. <laughs> Pizza. Stop. Todd's going to choke me. That was pretty good. I was a little skeptical, but that was pretty cool. <laughs> when we auditioned Tasha, she blew us away. Um, she had sides, never saw them before. You know, in a matter of her third line, she was completely emotionally connected. Todd was immediately fell in love with her. You know, 29 shots, it was three shots. It's three shots, I think, because he had three lives involved. The young man, his mother, and the police officer. She was very connected to being a mom and the loss of her son. Photographs. Death. Well, instinctively, she's pulled back from the group because that's what she needs to do to find, you know, to find inside of her what, what manifests for this character. Danny's my wild card. I'm, uh, I'm a part of a mixed racial minority and uh, there have been events when I've been uh, actively persecuted against. He also blew us away at the audition. We liked him very much, he was very connected. I was concerned about his look. And I have to be honest, initially, I guess I had put in my mind the stereotypical Irish cop turned detective. And so his look for me was holding me back. And then Todd and I talked about it, 
And then I kind of thought, no, how stupid, exactly. You totally don't want some Irish cop. And then when I kind of looked, kicked back and I looked, he almost reminded me of very, like, kind of Steven Seagal-ish, um, stoic, seems like he's very in control, but man, when the bad guy comes, he's going to go off on them. And it was great. I met Todd through the Strawberry Festival. He was looking for a director, and we got hooked up through Van. Yeah, I'm going to ask a lot of you, and so one of the things that's really important for me is for you to understand, A, that, I was, that I'm an actor first. You know, when I work with writers in, in a writing group or, or working with a project as a director, I always believe that any problems that you have with the script or anything, go, it's there. You just have to mine it, you know. A director, though, we talked about not being bossy, but a director being at the helm of the project, guiding the project, being at the helm, is a position of power, I guess. And for a woman to have that position, it doesn't ever occur to me, Oh, I'm a woman. How are people going to respond? This thing connected. You have, you have Wi-Fi. You get Wi-Fi in there. I kind of feel more like my background is, you know, 25, 30 years, dancer, actor, playwright. Door behind you. Walk down the hallway and descend the first staircase. Um, but it, but it is, I guess. I hadn't thought really much about it, but I guess it is. A, an interesting dynamic to be a woman director. That's where the sensory beauty comes in at. Because you experience the third character through all the sensory material that you guys experience over the course of that play. I always want the closure. I always want everything to be neat and tidy because it kind of makes me feel better about being in the universe. In the universe, it's neat mm -hmm. and tidy. Mm -hmm. But the universe isn't neat and tidy.